What's up, metalheads? We have a big, big day today. I'm about to interview one of the biggest bands in the world, Metallica. Uranium's moving up in the world. Swanky band, swanky hotel. Hell yeah. Uh. What's up, everybody? I'm sitting down here with Metallica. What's going on, guys? Hi. <laughs> that was like the coolest intro ever. Yeah, see that, that was so That's cool. Right. That Thanks. was so cool. So you guys are massively huge. You've been around for 20 years, over 20 years, and always started out doing your, your way, doing the metal your way, and are still turning out metal. How the do you do it? We do it our way, <laughs> you know? How do we do it? We don't think about it. That's what happens. We've always not worried about what's going on, what's popular. We were going with what feels good to us and kind of what's coming out of us at that time. It's really just been a diary of where we are as people and as a band. Well, that's what our music does. Let's talk about the band before St. Anger. A lot of was going on. Jason loved the band. You weren't well. Um, you know, obviously you have families, which are priorities. You know, what kept you moving? Why didn't you just say, it, you know, time to retire? Because I knew it wasn't time to retire. <laughs> it just, it was not the right time. Um, when that day comes, I think we'll all kind of know that. And uh, not really any reason to stop. Uh, we're, we're still creating things that we feel good about, you know? And uh, and I think one of the parts to that is when you're going through such rough stuff, when you come out of it, some of your better stuff is happening, so. Kirk decided to show up. What's up, dude? Hi, how you doing? You're late. Yeah. 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 Sorry, I, uh. You're late for Settle school, Settle down. Dude. I had to, uh, go do something. Do you have uh, a note? Really important. Did you have to take a pooper? <laughs> no, uh, no, nothing like that. I'll it's, take mine. I had to, uh, find mm. some water. Can you guys all move down one? Cause if, uh, no, oh, in there? I'm sorry. And would you mind sitting next to Julia? Are you saying trade with I Kirk? Is that? I need these Wait, why are you f***ing up Yo? <laughs> what up, dog? We're <laughs> 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 rough around the edges, to be honest with him, but you know, the show goes on. Anyway, <laughs> interview my oh, time. Oh, my <laughs> time. You can film it. Before St. Anger came out, there was a lot of a lot of hype going on within the industry. This is like back to the good old days, back to kill them all. It was going to be brutal. Um, then the album came out and all the controversy began. People talking about the sound, the drums, the vocal, the lack of solos, you know, versus what it used to be. I'm sure you guys have a lot to say about that. You know, how do you feel? Actually, no. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. A, a lot of people say, oh, I can't listen to, to the album, you know, because of the drum sound. I'm sorry. But you know, that's, <laughs> to me, that's just like a crock because people listen to <laughs> demos all the time. People listen to like first albums of, you know, of, uh, 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 from bands who have like absolutely no budget and it sounds like it was recorded in a tin can. And you know, our, our album is better sounding than all those examples, but still people have to, you know, buy into all that crap without even really taking the time and or investing time and in actually listening to the content of the album. To me, the content of the album is what really counts, you know, the songs. You know, okay, this, the sound might be challenging at first, but really it's all about the songs, you know, the content. Sweet. Yeah, but I mean, I think that the reason you got that reaction is because you're not a startup band and this isn't a demo tape, you know what I mean? So I think people are kind of taken aback, like, because it's very different from the stuff you've done before. Oh, but I gotta tell you that I'm, I'm, I always get really surprised when people get 
kind of surprised at, at, at you know, because I think that we've laid that down for 20 years. We've always kind of walked that. It's like, this right. is what we do. We do it for ourselves. I mean, I, I've heard myself say that like 5,000 times. And of course, we sort of like, in our selfish ways, expect that everybody else knows everything that we're thinking like that. So it always, it just really surprises me or, or, or kind of ambushes me that people get stunned when we do something kind of like wacky because that's what we've always done. And, um, you know, it's just, you know, it's so hard in the wor world of, of metal and stuff because there's like, there's like these ways supposed to be, you know, you're supposed to look this way, you're supposed to sound this way, and there's all these like very kind of narrow definitions yeah. of what it's supposed to be. I think that we 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 threw that challenge down from the word go in 1983 when we started. One, two, eight, two, three, nine. It's just kind of. It's a I thought that it's that a was addiction. I a thought that that was like the sort of in some way it always been the kind of the, the thing about Metallica is we were the one band that was going to challenge the status quo, challenge the conservative elements in the hard rock. So when people sit there and go, "Wow, the record sounds really strange," it's like, "It's Metallica, of course." You know all these records and of all course, this stuff. Strange. <laughs> strange. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, <laughs> and they're part of the conservative <laughs> bit. That's all. Yeah, <laughs> it's a real contradiction in terms. You know, a lot of metal fans think that they're anti-authoritarian and you know very rebellious. You know, but when they actually are listening to right, heavy metal and are, and they're in their the heavy metal lifestyle, they have all these guidelines, and it's very very narrow. You know, what what fits in between those guidelines? It's a real contradiction in terms. It's a bit closed-minded to think in, in that way, and our band has always been about challenging that and trying to widen that gulf, you know, and and, and make it so that that we can offer something different, something more challenging. It, you know, this album is definitely a challenge, you know, sound-wise, you know, uh, content-wise. You know, if you line ten Metallica fans up against that wall, you get ten different things. I want this, I want that, I want that, the lightning, I want it to, you know, so we just got to look inward like we've always done. And this record especially because of the process of what was going on internally. I mean, we shut ourselves off from the whole universe and just made the record that came from the heart and from the soul. And when you do that, you can't lose. This album is obviously much heavier than, you know, the past couple that you've had. What, you know, you, you went another route after the Black Album, you did something else. What made you guys go back to the to the brutal sound, to the heavier you, sound? You know, you know what I have to say about that is it's more a return to progression. Think about that, as it were returning to progression. Just uh, rolling these isn't that a band? Oh God. Uh, uh, I have to go lay down. <laughs> That's crazy. Like but, you know, what have you, you been reading that? today? That's I was just going to say. That's the title album. I was just going to say. Progression. Return to progression. It, it, I mean, it wasn't like... We sat down in the studio and we spent, what, six months? On the drum sound. <laughs> six months unplugging the snare. No. We, um... We were just jamming. It was basically like, there's got to be, like, just no rules. We just sit down, we play. Every day we show up, the three of us and Bob Rock. The only kind of semi-rule was nobody brings in any um, material from home. So it all comes out of the jams of the four of us together. Cool. And what happened was that um, as we got further into that process, we were doing a lot of experimenting. So it was a very um, kind of natural kind of thing and then you know we just made some more jams that were kind of fast and, and it was very effortless and it was really fun doing it again yeah. before we knew people it like who inspired that it's like well i think our we inspired we, we that <laughs> do you know what i mean Absolutely. i think the happier we got or the more good we felt with each other the 
the, the, the more excited we got about playing, the more excited we got, the faster and the more energetic it felt. On the issue of Bob Rock, I believe he was the one who um, suggested the garage type sound. When he did, how did you feel about that? What was your first initial reaction? You know, it, it wasn't something like, okay, we'll settle for that sound. I mean, that was pretty much the sound from the beginning. It was very, it was very uh, liberating. We got so stuck up through the 90s in, in, the, in the process. I think we became kind of enslaved to the process. Bob, I think, got just really sick of, 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 of the sameness of that. And he was the one that really sat down and said, look, if you guys, if we're not going to challenge ourselves next time around, I'm not going to be part of it, then make the record with somebody else. I was like, oh, that was a bit of a wake-up call. Yeah, Hello? turn them off the cell phone <laughs> yeah. and interview people. Thanks a lot. Real yeah, I'm making a really important point here. Yeah, seriously. Um, Thanks so a lot, everybody. <laughs> yeah, it's Bob. He's right here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so about the snare sound, Bob. <laughs> um, so it was just about... You really love you. We'll call you back. Yeah. About challenging ourselves. It's a real honest sound. You know, it's the sound of us setting equipment up throwing a bunch of mics up and playing. You know, there's very little polishing on it. You know, there's very little production. It, that's more accurate than 90% than of the albums out there of what a band really sounds like when they're playing together in a room. We wanted to preserve that and, you know, maintain that honesty. And when you do that, you get, you get, you get prosecuted for it. So I, I think that the reason you guys got prosecuted mostly was because the hype within the industry was that this is back to, you know, kill them all or injustice for all. And within, when you hear that, you expect the old school metal that we heard from you, you expect the souls and you expect the stuff. And I think that that's part of the reason that you guys got so much is because everybody was like, oh, so we're gonna get this, this, this and that, which is what you gave, you know, yeah, at that time. That's their own well, fault yeah. for well, getting, well, assuming what they're gonna get. Maybe we went too far back. <laughs> Pre kill them all to yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, I mean going I mean going far back. We went back to There's no way. Earth. There's no way we're going backwards. I mean yeah. no matter what. To, to, there's to no me. use to go backwards. There's to no U turn sign and Metallica's yeah. road, you know? Yeah. But for you'll, a band you'll, that has nothing to say about this, we've sure used up a lot of tape. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you'll never get a, a carbon copy. A, Why a, did a, you force me to have that snare sound? Because, man, you you, you burnt my uh, you burnt my breakfast that morning. Because you took my solo away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think people have have this kind of perception of this band that we sit, we have these big meetings with marketing people and all these managers and lawyers and all this, you know, all this, it's like completely like planned out. And it's just like, I mean, people sit there, like, what's with the sound, of, you know, the drum sound? It's like, it, it went down in like a second. You know, do you know what I mean? It's just like, there's not a lot of thought that goes into a lot yeah, of this stuff. Yeah, people do think that huh? about you guys. People yeah. do feel And we just kind of like sit there and do it. We just do and so went basically, with it, you, you know? went back to the way it used to be when you guys just started out and you yeah. just sat down and jammed, and yeah. that's how you made the demos. Yeah, yeah. we, we cool. cleaned totally the organic. Yeah. We just cleaned, we threw all the, all the old processes out the window, and we started new. All all the all the the feelings, the emotions uh, uh, that we experienced in the last year and a half, you know, we're, we're, we totally just channeled into the music, and you know, you put all those factors together, and. You come up with sane anger. And these days, you you know, you don't have to waste you know f fifty rolls of two inch tape. You know that's really expensive. Now you plug into the Pro Tools or whatever right. and record all the time. And if you don't you like it, get rid want. of it. Yeah. yeah. So it was really great to be able to record everything we were doing and then pick the magic moments. Talking to people about this interview, you know, and, and just about you guys in general, every mother knows who you guys are. How do you guys feel that, like, grandmas all along the country and just everybody knows who you are and even knows some of your songs? That's how huge you are. 
Mm-hmm. We've spawned yeah. three generations, or span. We haven't spawned. Them, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe, but we've spanned three generations of fans. Okay. That's amazing, that's all. All right. You know, I, I thought there was a follow-up after that. But you thought there was yeah. a point to this? Yeah. yeah. No. Well, check it out. You know, people who bought, people who bought Kill 'Em All, with it, you know, when it came out in 1983, who are in their 30s, you know, 30, 35, are now in their 50s and have children and possibly grandchildren. You know, it's great because uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, I'll, I'll look out into the audience and I'll see like you know, eight-year-olds, ten-year-olds knowing the songs. You know, it's just like totally rocking out. You guys crossed the line, brought metal to the masses. Why do you think a lot of bands can't do that? And do you feel that, you know, metal should stay underground? I think, you know, thinking that metal should stay underground is a very narrow-minded, shallow uh, train of thought, you know? I think in any and every genre, music has that same group of people that have that mentality. (laughs) <laughs> Absolutely. You know, as soon as we did Fade to Black, as soon as we did a video, as soon as all these first things that weren't supposed to happen happened and, and helped us kind of break out of that little box that we were, felt we were stuck in, yeah. you know? I also think it's a question of intimacy, you know? When uh, when your favorite band is a small underground band, you feel a lot closer to yeah. them, you know? Absolutely. You feel like they're yours, you know? If you, they, if you feel like... They're, they're there just for you. I'm certainly uh, guilty of that myself, you know, and I can understand how, oh, the thinking behind that. But, you know, it's also unrealistic to think that, that you can just keep, uh, you know, a small underground for yourself if they're blowing up and, like, everyone's discovering them. I think it's, 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 de- it's you know, it's depriving yourself of, of, of adventures. You know, it's a human being. It's like you sit there, if you live your life in a box, to me, that's not living it to the max. You sit there and go, okay, we're a band and we're supposed to live by these rules. We're not supposed to do that. I mean, then we're we're cheating ourselves of yeah. great experiences that really? life has to offer. What are some bands out there right now that you think are cool? There is a band that, that, that reminds me of a younger version of us, and that's Sum 41. Just in their attitude, not so much the music, but just the, in their attitude and how much they, they look like they're enjoying doing what they're doing, you know, and just totally going for it and just, you know, having that just yeah. reckless abandon. I totally see that in them and I just, you know, I see a lot of uh, similarities to, you know, what we used to do back in the day and yeah. it's just, uh, it's kind of cool to watch, you know, because you can, uh, they're on kind, of re- you can kind of relive it without, you know, they're actually participating. We'll go Metallica. We was on Sub 41. Can I play with you? They're our little nephews. We love them. What about the rest of you guys? I like some of the more obscure bands like uh, Candiria mm-hmm. or Mashuga mm-hmm. on the heavy side of things. But then I, you know, I like Radiohead and on the other end of the spectrum as well. James, any input? Uh, I don't like anything. Because <laughs> you're angry. Right? That's what I'm talking oh, yeah. about. F*** it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're so cool. So if some 41 is, <laughs> is our nephews, then you're our sister. Ah, okay, oh, thanks, okay. man. Die, 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 do your face and die. Are you out there? Do you guys think that there's a price to fame and what was yours? Well, I mean, there, you, you, there's a lot of sacrifices. I mean, you know, you make a lot of sacrifices to, to do what you have to do, whether it's, you know, recording or, or touring or whatever. When you go out on the road, you know, it, it truly separates the men from the boys, you know? You have to have a certain mentality to go out on the mentality? road. Mentality? Yeah, men, <laughs> men, you have to have a mentality. Have a boy tality. Yeah, you can't have a boy tality at all. <laughs> Put away your boy tality. You don't want to see it. <laughs> well, for me, if you ask me that question, it depends on what mood I'm in. I'll say, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks, or it's all great, you know. Who's to say, you know, if I wasn't in a band, would my drinking or my other kind of behaviors would have 
been worse even, you know, mm -hmm. or got me in worse places, mm -hmm. you know. There's a lot of excuses I get away with because I'm always in a rock band, you know. You know, oh, the whole hotel, you know, at five in the morning ran out because you set the alarm off and, you know, stuff like that. Speaking of which, what is the craziest thing you've done to a hotel room? Mm. Slept in it. <laughs> We'd have dark fights. Um, That's I really think, safe uh, when you're totally, pissed drunk. Yeah. Yeah, uh, dude. There, but there's hold like, up. Remember the, yeah, the, BB the, guns shooting everything out the window. Remember the bionic like, wrestling matches? Should we be talking about that on TVs? And it was a long time ago. Yeah. Remember the bionic? It was okay, I was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, I'm in a band. The bionic fights. Yeah. The bionic wrestling <laughs> matches we used to Slow do. motion uh, wrestling. Yes, yeah, they, they, we, we, we'd fight each other in slow motion, but after a while the room would just become shambles Smash because of that. <laughs> yeah. So oh, what's man. left for Metallica? What's left for Metallica? Yeah. Whatever happens is next. I don't know. We, we're not we looking anger. for anything. Trouble finds us, you right know. On. Challenges find us. Well, guys, it was an honor sitting here with you. Thank you. Producers mm -hmm. cutting me off, sit here for hours, but I don't think we're allowed to do that because you have a show to play. Yeah. I'd rather really sit here, I'd rather sit here with you. Lars. That's just time. <laughs> Where'd you call your sister? <laughs> no, I... Now you'd rather hang. Goodbye. Time for us. Time for life. Time to kiss your ass goodbye. Contribution, you get the better stay. Far too left from the fire.